This is the hardest offense to stop in Madden 24. Break yourself, fool! <laughs> Do it! It has explosive run plays. Run. Unstoppable glitch routes all over the field. And one play touchdowns versus every defense in the game. Thank you. So if you want to see one unstoppable offense I'm using to get results like this, game is crazy. stick around after the intro. The For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. In today's video, I'll once again be using my Denver Broncos offense and Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help, you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. I'm still using the New York Giants team in today's video, and I'll be facing off one of the best teams in the game in the Baltimore Ravens. But I only have one more gameplay left before I switch from the Giants to a new team. So let me know in the comments section who you would like that team to be, but just know I'm a little tired of using teams with horrible quarterbacks. So I'll most likely choose a team with a better quarterback situation. The two that are getting the most votes are the Bengals and the Niners and I also want to use my Eagles once again after beating the Cowboys last week. I started this game out on defense and I do a pretty good job of slowing my opponent down on the first drive as we don't give up more than a few yards on any given play before we give up a huge crossing route to let him get inside the five before letting him punch it in on the ground to take a quick 7-0 lead. Damn it! The offense that I'll be focusing on today's video is once again my iForm Close offense as I've already made several videos about this scheme and I think it's probably the best ball control offense in the game. And this offense is perfect for a team like the Giants since their running back is so good but their quarterback is horrible and constantly overthrows passes. So I will need a run heavy approach for this game. My audible plays are still the double outs as these speed out routes will get open outside of any defense except cover two zone. The PA tight end leak as this is my one play touchdown against every defense in the game and my last passing audible play is the PA deep cross go, which is the play that I'm going to be focusing on most in today's video. My last two plays are for my run plays. One run play for the inside in the zone weak and my fifth and active play the halfback stretch so that I have an outside run play as well. For my substitutions, I put out a tip video last week about an exploit that was accidentally created in the last patch where you can put a tight end at either receiver spot and it guarantees that the adaptive AI read and react run defense will be turned off for the entire game. And since I have a fast tight end in Darren Waller, I will put him in this position here and he'll be able to play a lot like a normal receiver just much bigger on the other side i make sure to put my fastest and best receiver in darius slayton as this route here is responsible for my one play touchdown so i'll keep him there just in case i need to switch to that at any point during the game on the very next play i see that he has no second level linebackers so anytime i see that i'm going to run the inside zone weak as i get a big first down when i get back to the huddle i see that he's running cover one so on the very next play i switch to the pa deep cross go as there's two different ways to run this play but the safest way is to motion the b route across the formation so that he is running it to the outside and to the boundary away from any potential users over the middle of the field just make sure to run from a hash mark to give yourself a lot of space on this route this motion shouldn't be a tell to your opponent either as i will also make this motion a lot in the run plays especially the halfback stretch against zone coverage the streak will pull back any deep zone in the area but against man coverage i just have to make sure to throw it in the break and look at the huge instant separation we get despite the fact that we're running this play with an 89 speed tight end against a cornerback from here i make that motion again only this time i snap the ball before he can get set all the way across the field so that i can help seal the edge better with the halfback stretch as we get in the field goal territory and now we go back to pounding the rock as running the ball is really the basis of this scheme and we get all the way down inside the 10 before i get to the one yard line on fourth down and i decide to switch offenses and put all my faith into daniel jones and a quarterback sneak I haven't put my blocking to aggressive as I've heard a lot of people tell me in the comments that this helps in these situations. That's a fucking lie! But this is Daniel Jones we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, of course. Something wrong here. And I haven't learned yet that it's never a good idea to get Daniel Jones involved in anything. On defense, I try to send the house to maybe get a safety, but that backfires as he gets off the goal line. But I try it again on the very next play, and now he's completely out of the danger zone. I try to man zero blitz him one more time and on the next play, and he hits me with a simple slant route to Rashad Bateman that he takes all the way to the house for a quick 14-0 lead. Ah! Back on offense with only about a minute left, I decide running is not the best plan, so I switch to another formation from this offense in my gun wing flex offset scheme. I've already put out a full breakdown of this offense as well as the defenses that I'm using in today's video, so if you guys want to learn more about these schemes, I will have links in the description of those videos as well as on screen at the end of this video. 
So stick around for that. On the first two plays, I run the mesh double drags and hit the comeback route tight end right over the middle. But on the second play, he was onto that as he almost jumps it. And now I have to change my plans. He's running a lot of cover six, which is one of my favorite defenses as well. But since I run so much, I know there's a weakness to it on the cover two side. So I work the tight end side for a big play to get in the scoring range before I get a penalty for holding as I forgot to turn the aggressive blocking back to default. <laughs> And now a bad throw by Daniel Jones later, and I'm at a difficult third and long that I need to convert. Daniel Jones might suck, but at least Darren Waller is a cheat code as we just throw it up to our six foot six tight end who wasn't even open. You got most and my opponent didn't like that. As we go into halftime, down seven. He tries to do an onside kick to start the second half, and I will take the short field. As we go right back to running the football before we get the same deep crosser wide open. Only to see Danny Dimes missing by a mile. <laughs> So we go back to the run to get the first down before trying it again. I said earlier that this play has two different setups. For this setup, I'm going to leave the B receiver where he is, but I'm also going to add another route by putting the A tight end on a five yard in. The streaking X route will still pull back any zones in the area, but I now have three different levels of passing between the running back, which only beats zone, the A route and the B route tight ends that both beat man and zone allowing me to really read this from front to back. Starting with the running back, working my way back to the A route tight end, and then working my way back to the B route, which is the deepest level. The user is something to watch more with this setup, but since I've been running with a lot of success, he will have to step up on the play action like he does here, and he will never be able to get back 20 yards deep to cut off this route, as Daniel Jones actually hits his receiver this time to tie the game. On defense, I am still running way too many man zero blitzes and he's still beating me with simple slants and crossers. So I switch it up at midfield to get him to a third and three before he turns into a runner and gets into field goal territory before I get a huge sack to knock him back to third and a mile. He gets a few yards back on third down and decides to go for it rather than kick the go-ahead field goal. Gotcha, bitch! And that was a mistake as we get the ball back with just some minutes left in the game. I start the next drive by running as I originally planned to kill clock and try to score as time runs out, but when I see that he's in a cover zero, I decide to score instead. So I switch to the PA tight end leak, as all I have to do is put these running back on check and release routes. This will make sure that they still block any rushers that get in immediately, but it will also make sure that they run a route so they will hold the safeties responsible in coverage. If I were to just put this running back on a simple pass block, the safety would recognize that and turn to a deep safety right over the post route and take that away. But on a check and release, you can see that he just sits over the middle of the field covering no one. Break yourself, fool! He could go! On the very next play though, I choose cover for match, and my opponent comes out in an empty backfield look with four wide receivers to one side, which instantly glitches his defense out. What the hell was that? As the tight end gets wide open by about 30 yards in every direction. So lesson learned. Don't use this defense against an offensive look like that. Back on offense, the plan is to kill clock and score with no time left once again. And the run game is working as my opponent is already calling his timeouts. As we muscle for the first down before deciding to get Daniel Jones involved. And that's never a good idea. Yeah! So I go back to the PA deep cross in the next play. Waller gets wide open once again, and Daniel Jones has a clean pocket with no one around him. But he still misses the mark by a mile as he sails it out of bounds. What, are you fucking retarded or something? That ain't fucking right. So now in 4th and 11, I decide to go back to the exact same play, only this time I try to throw it early before he crosses the field so that he doesn't just chuck it out of bounds this time. Oh, fuck you! Fuck you, pal! And I throw it what is essentially a game-stealing interception, because I didn't trust Danny Dimes to make a longer throw. From here, my opponent just pounds the rock on the short field. I get him to a 4th and 5 to keep my hope alive, but he kicks me with a quick slam on the very next play to seal the deal, as I have no timeouts left taking my first loss with the Giants, and I blame it all on Daniel Jones, because this was really the first video where I tried to pass a lot, as he cost me a touchdown on the first drive, and he also cost me with multiple bad throws throughout the game. So, let me know in the comments section which team you guys would like to see me switch to, because I'm tired of using this bum-ass quarterback, but just know if they don't have a good quarterback, I probably won't pick them. Other than that, if you guys want to see more about the offenses and defenses that I was using in this game, I will have them popping up on screen, and until next time, thanks for watching, man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below